Good Friday to you. My name is Mr. Royce. This is AP Calculus BC. Welcome to class. Well, today the take-home quiz is due, so I'll be your video sub today. There is a live sub in the room who will be uh, generously donating adult supervision services to you. Um, so. Please turn your take-home quiz into the overhead projector and uh, live sub will make sure that those get to me. Thank you, live sub, for being here today. Uh, we're going to study the product and the quotient rules today and it looks like the homework is assignment number 11. You have the solution sheet for assignment number 11. Assignment 11 is due on Monday. And assignment 10 is due today. We're, just hold on to your assignment 10. I'll check in both 10 and 11 on Monday. So let's start with the product and quotient rules. We have a, you have a handout lesson plan. And we're going to take a look, first of all, at a review of differentiation. So on page 1, I'm going to zoom in on this. just to make sure that you can see clearly through the video and see if I have my zoom in capability just barely okay in good shape so you probably remember studying limit properties like the limit of a product is the product of the limits and the limit of a quotient is the quotient of the limits <clears throat> it turns out that there are derivative properties that are pretty similar but there are some differences there is a scalar multiple rule for derivatives. The derivative of a scalar multiple c times u, where u is a function of x, is a, uh, it's a property that operates just like the corresponding property for limits. And that is you can pull out du dx. You can pull out the constant. The constant comes out front. So that's the scalar multiple rule. And I'll make this a little bit bigger. You can write this as either c times the derivative with respect to x of u, or you could write this as c times u prime. So there's two of the five ways to write a derivative, c times du dx or c times u prime. When I say go, I'd like you to say out loud and in unison, when taking derivatives, the constant comes out front. Ready? Go. When taking derivatives, the constant comes out front. All right, now let's take a look at the derivative of a sum or a difference. The derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives. We can write that as du dx plus or minus dv dx. Or we could write that as u prime plus or minus v prime. So uh, the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives. When I say go, I'd like you to say out loud and in unison, the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. Ready? Go. The derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives. It applies to differences also. Now let's take a look at product. Raise your hand if you believe the derivative of a product is going to turn out to be the product of the derivatives. Just go like that. Derivative of a product is and then raise your hand if you do not believe it's going to be that easy. Uh, thanks, you can put your hands down. It turns out it's, it's not that easy. The derivative of a product is not the product of the derivatives. The uh, textbook has a proof based on the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Based on the definition of derivative, you can prove that the derivative of a product is something else. It's the derivative of the first, u prime, times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second, v prime. It's u prime v plus u times v prime. Alternatively, you can write that as du dx times v 
plus u times dv dx. Boy, we end up using this product rule a lot in calculus. And so I'd like you to um, consider the following method for storing this in your mind. It's almost a mnemonic device. I just chant derivative of the first times the second plus first times the derivative of the second, where first refers to the first factor in the product, and second refers to the second factor in the product. So the product rule, which is half of today's lesson, is that the derivative of a product is the derivative of the first times the second plus first times the derivative of the second. So when I say go, I'd like you to say that in unison. When I say go, I want you to say the derivative of the first times the second plus first times the derivative of the second. Ready? Go. The derivative of the first times the second plus first times the derivative of the second. That's pretty good. Alrighty, well, let's uh, see how that applies when there's three factors in the product. Well, instead of writing the factors down essentially twice, and in the first term take the derivative of the first, and the second term take the derivative of the second, when you have three factors in the product, write down the product three times. U, V, W plus U, V, W plus U, V, W. In the first term, put the derivative on the first. In the second term, put the derivative on the second factor. And in the third term, take, put the derivative on the third factor. That is the product rule applied when there's three factors in the product. And the other um, part of today's lesson is the quotient rule, today's product rule and quotient rule. Name. When you're taking the limit of a quotient, it's just the quotient of the limits. Same with the limit of a product. But when you're taking the derivative with respect to x of a quotient, the answer is not the quotient of the derivatives. Instead, and the proof is in the book, um, you just need to learn the mechanics of this. The formula for the derivative of a quotient is v times u prime minus u times v prime, all divided by v squared. Now, that one is a formula that students sometimes have difficulty remembering, but fortunately there's a mnemonic device for this one that it's really easy to remember. It's a poem, and the poem goes like this. Low d high minus high d low. Draw the line and square below. Low, high, d. What's the meaning of this poem? Well, in the poem, low is a poetic way of expressing the notion of denominator. High is a poetic way of expressing the notion of numerator. So when I say low d high, D means derivative of. So low d high means denominator times derivative of the numerator. So low d high minus high d low, draw the line and square below. That's the quotient rule. So when I say go, I'd like you to say out loud and in unison the poem low d high minus high d low, draw the line and square below. Here we go. Ready? Go. Low d high minus high d low. Draw the line and square below. That's the quotient rule. So, let's uh, see what's going on down here. Derivatives of algebraic functions is this second one. Here's a review of what we've been doing so far. Please take a moment to write down what you think the answers are to these four problems in Roman numeral two. What are the derivatives of those algebraic functions?